Welcome to the Dhamma Podcast. The video that follows is titled The Great Global Pagoda. This 16-minute film offers a stunning look at the Global Pagoda being built on the outskirts of Mumbai, also known as Bombay, in India. It is a modern wonder of engineering and vision. Architecturally, this building will be by far the largest single-span stone dome in the world, twice as big as the Basilica of St. Peter at the Vatican. This podcast is sponsored by Pariyati, a nonprofit publisher that offers written audio and video content and whose mission is to enrich the world by disseminating the words of the Buddha, providing sustenance for the seeker's journey, and illuminating the meditator's path. For more information regarding Pariyati, please go to www.pariyati.org. That is www.pariyati.org. For more information on Vipassana meditation as taught by S.N. Goenka, including a schedule of courses offered throughout the world, please see www.dhamma.org. That is www.dhamma.org. Since the dawn of humanity, monuments have been erected all over the world, embodying the essence of civilizations, like pages in history. Devotion and gratitude inspired people to construct these monuments and to commemorate great events for generations to come. Twenty-six centuries ago, an extraordinary event took place in India. Prince Siddhartha Gautama became the Buddha, the Enlightened One. He started traveling through the towns and villages of northern India, teaching the way to liberation from suffering, setting in motion the wheel of Dharma. His message of peace and harmony spread far and wide, bringing happiness wherever it went. In the years after the Buddha had passed away, life in India was permeated by the Dharma. Out of devotion, people built vast monasteries and monuments to honor the Enlightened One. The one who exceeded all was the great Emperor Ashoka. He took on the duty to spread the Dharma, erecting 84,000 monuments to commemorate the Buddha's teachings all over India. But his greatest contribution was to help spread the noble teachings beyond India. For that, he sent ambassadors of Dharma to nearby countries. There, it took root and flourished. Wherever people benefited from the Dharma, they built structures on the model of those in India, expressing their gratitude and devotion. The stupas were mostly based on the shape of the ancient Sanchi stupa, constructed by Emperor Ashoka. But different cultures added decorations on top of that base. A few others were modeled on the Mahabodhi temple in Bodhgaya, where the Buddha had attained enlightenment. But while the light of Dharma began to shine brightly in many countries, it slowly faded in India. The teaching became polluted, corrupted and forgotten 
until it disappeared from the land of its origin. Here, the wheel of Dharma had been set in motion, only to grind to a halt. Today in India, the Buddha is still held in respect, but most Indians believe him to be just another figure in the Hindu pantheon. People have a clouded view of this greatest son of India, and they are unaware of the universal Dhamma he discovered and taught to others. The neighboring countries, Myanmar, Sri Lanka, Thailand, Cambodia and Laos, preserve the Buddhist scriptures in the Pali Tipitika, enabling the entire world from ancient times until today to learn about the words of the Buddha. But in Myanmar, not only the words were preserved, but the practical essence of Buddha's teaching. A chain of teachers kept alive the practice of Vipassana meditation in its pure form. Among the shining examples are Venerable Webu Sayadaw, and before him, Venerable Lady Sayadaw, who opened the gate for all householders to come and practice Dharma and Vipassana. He appointed his brilliant lay disciple, Sayataji, to be a teacher. One of Sayataji's former students was Sayaji Yubakin, who paved the way for Dharma to start spreading all over the world, far beyond the borders of Myanmar. A traditional belief was handed down in the countries of Southeast Asia that 25 centuries after the Buddha, the Dharma would be returned to India, the land of its origin, to spread from there around the world. The great Vipassana meditation master, Sayaji Yubakin, had a deep volition to help this prediction come true. He strongly felt the debt of gratitude Myanmar owed India for the jewel of Dharma. Sayaji authorized his Dharma son, S.N. Goenka, as a Vipassana teacher, to carry the message of Dharma back to India. Inspired by Sayaji's vision, S.N. Goenka devoted his life to fulfill this noble mission and started teaching Vipassana meditation in India and many other countries. Today, this Dharma mission has entered a new phase. An extraordinary monument, the Global Pagoda, is being constructed in India, the land of the Enlightened One. This magnificent structure will be a beacon of Dharma, a lighthouse, dispelling the darkness of ignorance around the world. The Global Pagoda is a symbol of gratitude to the country of Myanmar, and will stand as a reminder for centuries to come that when the teaching was lost to India, Myanmar preserved it. The ancient stupas in Myanmar were built in the shape of Sanchi stupa in homage to India. Today in India, the global pagoda is being built in the shape of the famous Shwedagon pagoda in homage to Myanmar. The Great Global Pagoda will be an expression of gratitude to the Buddha, to the wonderful Dharma he introduced to humanity, and to the chain of teachers who preserved the Dharma in its pristine purity. It will also be an expression of gratitude to Sayaji Ubakin, whose strong Dharma volition caused the teaching to be sent back to India, and from there, starts spreading around the world. The 
site, chosen for the Global Pagoda, is a suburb of Mumbai, the most populous city and the commercial and tourist capital of this country of one billion people. Hundreds of thousands of Indians and foreign visitors will visit the pagoda. The huge monument will be surrounded by a wide encircling path with the capacity for 10,000 visitors. On the northern and southern sides, two additional smaller pagodas are being constructed. In June 2003, the inauguration of the small Northern Pagoda Dome took place in the presence of S.N. Goenka. The four-ton keystone was carefully placed to lock the inner dome of the structure. Soon after, the first Dharma discourse was given by S.N. Goenka under the completed dome. This Burma is my birthplace. और भारत भी मेरी जन्म भूमि कोई प्रश्न करे ये दोनों बात कैसे हुई मेरे केस में हुई being of a design identical to the main pagoda the small northern pagoda's dome can now give an inspiring indication of the extraordinary look the main pagoda will have once completed the global pagoda is one of the most ambitious structures ever to be built it is the world's largest dome to be constructed of stone. Unsupported by any pillar, the 97 meter diameter dome is an engineering marvel. The heavy stones are skillfully placed, interlocking into one another, to form a gigantic hollow dome structure. of thousands of stones are being used to create this immense monument. Thousands of trucks have brought these stones from the quarries miles away. stones are carefully cut to size and are adjusted by hand to fit the elaborate design. The demanding construction work is done by hundreds of skillful workers. This unique project is more than a monument to the memory of past greatness. The imposing gilded exterior will definitely attract attention, but the interior is purely functional. In the center of the pagoda will be a large meditation hall where thousands of people can practice the Buddha's teaching of Vipassana meditation together. One of Sayaji Yubakin's major innovations was to make a pagoda a functional part of a meditation center. At the heart of Yubakin's meditation center in Yangon is a hollow pagoda lined with cells. This demonstrates his belief that practicing Dhamma through Vipassana meditation is the best way to honor the Buddha and experience his teaching. In the Vipassana meditation centers in India and other countries, where Vipassana is being taught by S.N. Goenka in the tradition of Ubakin, similar pagodas are used for meditation. All who come to these modern-day Chetya halls have the opportunity to practice the Dharma in its original form and to advance towards liberation. The Global Pagoda 
will also serve as a Dharma Museum and a center for learning with facilities including libraries, multimedia presentations and a gallery. The gallery will house state-of-the-art educational displays about the Buddha's life story and his teachings. Genuine relics of Gautama the Buddha were donated for the Global Pagoda by the Mahabodhi Society of India. The authentic relics will be enshrined in the pagoda, preserved for generations to come. Followers of the Buddha all over the world naturally feel respect and gratitude to India as the land of the Buddha and first source of the Dharma. The Global Pagoda, which is funded solely by voluntary donations, presents a rare opportunity to earn merits by supporting a noble project that is bound to become a symbol of the second Buddha Sasa. While the world today is afflicted with the maladies of hatred, anxiety and fear, this living representation of the Buddha's heritage will promote peace, harmony and tolerance for all humanity.